Hello. In this uh, lecture video, we'll discuss the role of economics in modeling the life cycle of heavy construction uh, equipment assets. For some students, this uh, lecture will be mostly a review of what they studied in uh, engineering economics or an in any introductory finance and economics class. Here are the five learning objectives for today. Uh, heavy construction companies utilize expensive and large equipment and machines that uh, consume huge amount of their uh, uh, cash uh, and, and budget. Correct and uh, thorough understanding of the equipment cost and procurement gives companies a market advantage that leads to greater profits. Usually these expensive equipment assets are purchased uh, not in cash but with loans and credit lines from banks and lenders. This means that contractors pay interest, which can easily accumulate to significant amounts for the high price tags of uh, heavy equipment. Also, these equipment can live for so many years with many revenues and expenses generated from its use. As, as, as such, the justification of buying or selling equipment assets should consider its economic impact over its life cycle. We will learn about the equipment economic analysis, how to represent the equipment cash flows, the equipment the impact of the time value of money, and how to calculate the net worth of an equipment. Cash flow diagrams, CFDs, are used to visually represent the flow of positive and negative cash streams because of the ownership and use of the equipment. The positive cash flows or inflows are represented with uh, an upward uh, arrows with upward arrows the negative cash flows or outflows are represented using downward arrows uh, the cash flow of the year is summed and placed sum, summed uh, up and placed at the end uh, of that period except for the initial costs at the beginning of the cash flow for example this five uh, uh, $5,000 occur over the first time period, but it's represented here as a single sum of money at the end of the first time period. Uh, cash flows can refer to different time periods. Some are monthly, quarterly, or annually. A typical equipment can have one or all of uh, five possible cash flows. Uh, the cash flow starts with the first initial cost of obtaining the equipment. This cost, uh, first cost, can be uh, the full value of the equipment or just its uh, down, down payment. The operation and maintenance, O and M costs, represent any expenditures to operate and upkeep the equipment, which includes many costs like fuel, parts, minor preventive maintenance, and personnel who maintain and operate the equipment. The cash flow can end with a salvage uh, value, which is a positive cash flow that occur uh, due to the sale of the equipment in a usable or a salvaged uh, condition. Cash flow should show the revenue that's generated by the equipment, uh, which can be estimated in two ways, the hard way or the easy way. Uh, the hard and the true way of estimating the revenue cash flow is to figure out how much the equipment contributes to the payments received from the owner. Uh, the easy, meaning the project owner uh, or the customer. The easy and most common way of estimating the equipment revenue is to utilize its rental rate that can be charged internally from the equipment yard to the construction projects. In a similar way, the revenue represents the cost saved by avoiding renting the equipment. From now and, and then, uh, during the equipment useful life, uh, it requires overhaul work to upgrade or refurbish the systems to extend its life. This is uh, different than the regular preventive maintenance that occurs every year, at least. Equipment overhaul happens at much longer time intervals. 
The time value of money is an important economics concept that is very relevant to equipment management. The easy and true way to describe the uh, interest is to call it money rent. You pay the money owner rent to borrow the money amount over time. Interest is expressed by percentage rate per time period, which can be monthly, quarterly, or annual interest rate. For example, uh, a nine, for, for a 9% interest rate per year, you would pay $9 per year for every $100 you owe. There are two ways of calculating the interest payment. The simple and compound way. In simple interest approach, you will always pay interest on just the original amount you owe, or the principal amount. Uh, this means that you will pay $18 uh, for keeping a $100 loan for two years. On the other hand, the compound interest calculation builds up interest on top of the current loan balance you owe, which includes the original principal amount and any interest that accumulated before. This compounding effect is mathematically modeled, as shown in this formula, to uh, calculate IN, the interest amount of N time periods. So IN is the different uh, is the difference between the future and present worth or value of the money. The future value uh, for after the future va the future value after N years equals the principal amount P factors 1 plus i to the power n. The compounding calculation means that you will, oh, will pay now $18.81 of interest for pay, borrowing $100 over two years, which is 81 cents more than the simple interest calculations. Now cash flow the flows don't deal with simple cases of a single sum of money that's borrowed and paid back. As we shown in, a previous, uh, in, in previous slides, uh, cash flows can have multiple sums of money as inflows and outflows. Most of these multiple sums are repetitive in nature, like the O&M expenses, and can be clustered together as annual or monthly series that can we call A series. If we are given a uniform series, we can calculate its equivalent present worth by multiplying it with factor called P given A. The factor transforms a uniform series A to a single sum value P at the beginning of the first year of the uh, at the beginning of the first year of the series. The P given A factor is calculated as a function of the interest rate I and the number of cash flows in the uh, uniform series. On the other hand, we can calculate a cash flow uniform series uh, A that's equivalent to a single sum P at the beginning of year 1. You can see that the formula of the A given P factor is the inverse of the P, uh, if, if the P given A factor formula. So the A, A given P is the inverse of P given A. We can simplify the understanding of A given P and P given A factor by the story of a bank savings account. I need to have uh, an investment account that would give back a fixed annual return for a specific number of years after I deposit a large sum in the bank. If I know the amount P, I will deposit I will deposit, I can calculate the annual withdrawal amount A by using the A given P factor. The opposite case would be this way. I know what withdrawal amount A I want to have every year. In that case, I will use the P given A factor to calculate the large deposit amount P to put in the bank right now. We will see now a similar set of factors uh, to relate the cash flow uniform series A to its future worth F. As shown in this cash flow, F occurs at the end of the last year of the series. 
which is the same time the lost cash flow of the series, uh, series occurs. To calculate the future worth of a uniform series, we need to multiply A with the factor F given A. The factor has its own formula as shown. The opposite process can, be, uh, can happen by using the A given F factor. The uniform series future worth F represents the accumulated value of the deposit series over time, including the interest value. We can summarize here, here uh, uh, what, that we need mainly three formulas to analyze the cash flows of a typical equipment. A formula that relates a uniform series to its present worth. Second formula to relate the a uniform series to its future worth. And a third formula to relate a single sum uh, cash flow in the future to a single sum cash flow in the present. We can also deal with the inverse versions of these formulas depending on the given values in the analysis problem. We briefly explain the meaning of interest rate I as the cost of securing or renting the capital invest investment needed to buy an equipment. But who decides on this value I? Uh, we set the cost of capital or interest rate by, before analyzing the equipment cash flow. The value of I is determined based on, um, uh, on the source of the capital used to buy the equipment. Now, interest rates are typically applied to banks and lenders, but is this the only way to secure capital? Answer is no. There are three capital financing sources, including debt or borrowing loans. The construction firm can secure all of or part of the equipment purchase capital by using equity, which is the term used to describe the money raised from the investors who buy stocks in the company and return of earnings or dividends. If issuing more stocks is different, difficult, the company can ask its investors to retain their earnings or dividends to invest back in the company and help in buying the new equipment. So an equipment can per be purchased with a capital that's secured using one or more of the typical financing uh, mechanisms, debt, equity, and uh, or ret retained, retained earnings. Typically, the capital is raised using a mix of debt and equity. In this case, the cost of capital used in the equipment economic analysis is based on a weighted average of the debt interest rate and the equity uh, expected earnings uh, rate. Please look for the video of the cash flow exercises. Thank you and take care.